This is the third of four recordings on developing software solutions. Uh, this one is about developing a solution. Now, none of this is new to you. This should all be in summary because you've done this throughout your prac work. So without any further ado, let's begin. Defining and understanding the problem is the first step in the software development cycle. Problem definition involves examining a number of factors, including the needs of users and the boundaries within which the solution has to operate. When defining the needs of a system, we need to focus on more than the needs of the users. The user's needs are an important factor, but there are other considerations. The needs of the system will also uh, involve the need to represent data, the need to store data, the need to process and output data. Documentation is an important factor in software development. Its purpose is to provide a detailed explanation of the development process and decision making along the way. Documentation includes a list of sources and resources used as recorded in your bibliography, as well as ideas, development, and why components changed and evolved. This is important if you're developing a software solution as a commission. You will be given a design, a design brief and be expected to develop to that brief. If you change your components, you'll need to justify why changes were made. That justification is made through the documentation you provide. Planning and designing is an important part of any project. You will need to plan your program and what it will look like through storyboards. You'll plan what you need to code and who in your team is going to develop that code. You need to plan your inputs and outputs as, nece as necessary, which will be defined through a detailed data dictionary. You will need to define the flow of code, which will be developed uh, through your algorithm design and the main line of your program. You'll need to think about your variables, what they are called, where they will be used, and again, as defined in your data dictionary. And you need to know your final program's functionality. This will allow developers to stay true to their initial ideas and document the, the evolution of a project. The approach taken to a design and develop uh, a software package can vary from the very simple limited planning approach to a very detailed, formal and structured approach. The smaller the solution in terms of development size, the simpler the approach you could take. First up is rapid application. Used when presenting um, with, a, with a project that needs to be completed quickly. To do this, you would use some software development applications such as Visual Studio that has a database of code that you can quickly plug in to significantly, significantly speed up development for coders. A structured approach is used when there's a large budget, a long time period to complete project, and there is a large and specialized team of developers. For example, Apple develops each, each iteration of its macOS software through a structured development approach. Prototyping is used when there is a high emphasis on, pro on a project requiring an interaction between users and the application. This approach allows the production of multiple models that can be used in the creation of most ideas of the final product. End user development is used in a project that requires the manipulation of data by, uh, but by users who generally have limited experience in coding. We commonly see this approach with small businesses developing solutions through access, uh, applications such as Microsoft Access or Excel. An agile method is a set of methods and practices where solutions evolve through collaboration between self-organizing, cross-functioning teams. This is commonly used when a project has a relatively small scope of development. Clients can add or remove features owing to the flexible nature of that development. Algorithms are simple, logical, step-by-step -step methods to help solve a problem. Algorithm development occurs early when creating a solution to a given problem. Algorithms include calculations, reasoning, and data processing. When developing an algorithm, you need to keep in mind it is step a step-by-step -step process. Every algorithm you create needs to have your inputs and outputs specified. Each step of the algorithm must be defined. Each action needs to be thought out and clearly specified. It needs to be effective. An algorithm is generally uh, expected to be an, an unambiguous and able to be, be produce a successful output. To the left, you should see, this is what an algorithm will look like. You will notice the numbers down the left-hand side of the algorithm. They're not part of the algorithm. They will assist you, however, in your coding as each step or each number has code associated with it. So before developing a software package, you should create algorithms that will help you to understand the process that will lead to successful code development. Algorithms will only help you if you are able to make them functional. Your final product 
and design concept relies on the correct implementation of your algorithm. By creating an inefficient or incorrect algorithm, you are setting yourself up for imminent failure, as your final design will not suffice. It will result in either a product that is impractical or non-functional. In computer science, data structures are used to organize data and provide basic operations upon it. Different data structures are suited to different kinds of applications. For example, relational databases most commonly use B-tree indices for data retrieval, while a compiler implements usually a hash table to look up identifiers. The most common and likely well-known data structure is the one that we've used, the array which contains a contiguous collection of data items that can be accessed by an ordinal index, and that will make sense in a moment. Here is listed our most common data structures. First up, there are primitive data structures. The primitives um, are supported at the machine level. They can be used to make non-primitive data structures, and you'll see the array there is the first of a non-primitive. And they are integral and pure in form. They have predefined behavior and, spe and specifications. Examples of primitives include integer, float, character, and pointers. Arrays are homogeneous collections of the same data type. They have a static memory alloca uh, allocation, which means that memory space is allocated once and once only. cannot be changed during runtime. So if you define an array with five values in it, your array will only have five values. These arrays are used to implement vectors, matrices, and other data structures. Files are a list, uh, a collection of records uh, with different data structures, different data types. The file data structure is primarily used for managing large amounts of data, which is not uh, in, uh, used in primary storage for the system. Files help us to process, manage, access, and retrieve, and work data easily. We find files a lot in databases. Lists support dynamic memory allocation. The memory space is allocated can change at runtime, and there are two lists that we can use, linear and nonlinear. Subroutines, also known as functions, are very important when creating your code. It is a, it's a portion of code that may be called or executed from anywhere in the program. So here we see call calculate days, that is a subroutine. Identifying relevant and, uh, subroutines is an important step. By identifying a relevant subroutine, you are checking if the subroutine is necessary, naturally, to your code, and easy to execute as a portion of code. For example, if a portion of code needs to be executed multiple times, for example here the sub flash, instead of writing it several times, you call it. And you'll see in the subroutine there flash, it's a simple call that, that execute, executes that code. Now this is an important uh, diagram as well because it shows that on the left hand side, a subroutine, a, a, a main line, on the right hand side a subroutine that simplifies the main line as well. Once you have understood the limits of your program, creating the correct data set to test these limits will ensure smooth operating program testing. When testing a program, uh, use the correct data types for each variable. For example, you would not use a number to test a boolean. To test all facets of your program, using all data types will provide a strong test. Before you test any part of the program, Test check what outputs are to be expected, and cross check with the program's output before compiling or exporting, in such a way as the program will hopefully work. Test checking is a manual technique used for checking the logic of an algorithm. Test checking should be completed before coding to ensure your algorithms are working as expected. Test checks are a formative step and can show if your code is outputting the expected value. To perform a test check on paper, Create a table for all your variables across the heading of each column. Each row in the table becomes a step through any loops or conditions. Going through the pseudocode line by line, updating your variables as necessary, uh, will help to capture logic errors or that would otherwise go unnoticed. And you'll see here the algorithm is going through step by step by step, and as we step through each algorithm, each step of the algorithm, the variables for x, y, and z are changing and updating. When creating a software solution, some time restraints can be critical um, in the completion of the project. For many code segments, there is more likely um, many versions of code that already exist and are more efficient than the code you would otherwise be able to create. As long as this code is compatible 
um, and legally licensable, it should, could be beneficial in using your code um, or used in your code and to modify your existing solution. You may need to, of course, look at variables and how they're used and incorporate your own variables into that coding. There are many different coding languages, each with unique benefits and downsides. When implementing a solution, it is important for the appro appropriate coding language to be used to be able to complete the process efficiently, efficiently and effectively. It is important that the design team are using the same data dictionary of variables and resources so that the team's code will compile efficiently. Two examples here, if you're writing an operating system like Windows, you'd use C++. If you're writing a game for the Xbox or the PlayStation, you'd use C Sharp. Functional testing is when creating a software program is important to ensure the code is functional. Some testing may be used in a conformatory way, typically to verify that a given set of inputs or a function produces an expected output. This is known as testing, data testing and, and uh, code testing. Algorithms are a formative tool and are used to help understand code structures. Code is typically developed in two ways, flowcharts or pseudocode, each with respective benefits and weaknesses. Flowcharts show the path the code will follow. Pseudocode is similar looking to code, but it makes it harder to understand a code's path, for want of better wording. Desk checking allows us to help interpret pseudocode. In the structured approach, there is an emphasis on detailed documentation. Actually, in every approach, there's a detailed um, documentation required. When using test data, it is important to docu document the entire process to help establish the working parts of the code, identify what segments of the code are, are outputting unexpected results, and therefore record areas where corrections are required. We've been talking about data dictionaries. Well, as you know, a dictionary is a collection of words and their meanings. A data dictionary is a collection of all the variables used in a program, including the name of the variable, the type of the variable, uh, and the type of data will be hold, held, such as strings, integers, booleans, and how that data is going to be used. The purpose of a data dictionary is to inform other developers of the purpose of those variables. This documentation is crucial to use when developing a software solution with many people. Intrinsic documentation includes code comments, and comments within code and variable names. This allows coders to understand what code, what that, what the function of that code is. It allows programmers to identify features of the program, while also giving insight into problems that arise through logic errors. Test data is data specifically created for the purpose of checking if a solution to a problem is functioning uh, as in in the intended manner. Test data is input into the solution at which point an expected value is output. Known inputs should lead to known outputs. If the output is different, then the user knows there is something wrong with the current solution and can explore ways to fix that. Once a solution has been created, it should be tested thoroughly to find issues where the solution does not function as expected or required. Along with this testing, the solution should be evaluated to find places where new features could be added to increase functionality of the solution. Once this is completed, the identified problem should, uh, should be fixed and then testing should occur again. This test-fix cycle should be repeated until the solution is working as well as needed for the problem. Once we have created the software solution, it is vital that we maintain it for our, own, for our, for our end users. Maintenance, maintenance sorry, involves the modification of code. The main reasons we maintain code are changing user requirements. The users are the people who, this, who use a solution. If a user requires a modification, it is a programmer's job to make that change within the solution. We may upgrade the UI. This user interface is what the end users see and interact with. Inconsistencies in the UI can irritate the users, making the final solution a hassle for them, uh, for them to use, which is where software developers need to aim to improve or do better. An example is our school's website, which has undergone changes in UI to make it easy to use for end users to interpret and interact. We can change the data that we process. Uh, this is when we look at other variables that need to be considered or when the data uh, that needs to be processed is uh, by users 
needs to be changed to fit a new purpose. We can introduce new hardware or software. Hardware or software are both interrelated, and every year with new release of new technologies, um, changes happen quite a bit. In the field of video games and movie production, for example, we get to see things like this. Now, if you look at the image on the left, it's using older hardware and older rendering techniques. The image on the left, while still quite good, however, is vastly different to the image on the right. The image on the right is using new hardware and a new ray tracing technique, and so therefore the software can produce a much higher quality output. Next, we have changing organizational focus. Now, this relates more mostly to business perspective. When we look at our solution's purpose, um, it may not salute, suit the business anymore or the company anymore. So therefore, as developers, we need to change the solution so that it does then better suit the business. Otherwise, it becomes pointless and we tend to lose jobs. There can be changes in legal uh, legalities. If a change in legal uh, situation occurs, then the software solution may well breach that agreement uh, in the legislation. This could mean software becomes illegal to use and consequences could be heavy. If this is the case, we need to work on our software. Code may have been poorly designed. When we need to modify our code due to bugs in the system that cause errors, um, stuff will go could well. Stuff will go wrong, and we need to fix it. An example of this in your Yahtzee projects, the game that uh, has very sensitive data, in the sense that your variables are set and calculations occur within those variables are, are quite finicky. If you get a calculation wrong or you do a wrong data call you get some strange things happening. You may also get a uh, an error in your code where you have a divide by zero, which causes um, errors at runtime. Finally, testing and evaluating. Referring back to the design stage and compare the existing solution with the one that was theorized. Modifying the solution to match what was planned is needed to ensure that the user gets exactly what they are asking for from the beginning. This means you need to have full understanding of what you're aiming for as your end product and how you'll get there. If the user changes their mind halfway through, uh, then you need to find a suitable way to uh, sort those changes. It's been a rather long presentation, but hopefully it all makes sense. Thanks very much.